of Gymnasticsville. I'm your host, Midnight Robin, and I'm here with Carrie Adderley. Oh, I thought that was the cue to put the hoodie on. Okay, yeah, right, yeah, it. he's gonna put the hoodie on right now. So, yeah, welcome. Welcome, Earthlings, gymnasts, tumblers, trampolinists, double power tumblers, back flippers, Slam dunkers, dance flippers. Dance flippers. Everybody, what's up? How y'all doing? So, all right, let's get right to it, Carrie. Um, one of the topics that we want to talk about, that I'd like to talk about, is the evolution of gymnastics because we're always trying to take it to the next level, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. All right, so, and we did a poll actually, and it was actually kind of split, and the poll was, you know, is power tumbling just more exciting than artistic gymnastics? And it was split 50-50. And then we talked about the evolution and things of that nature. And the other thing is that in women's gymnastics, there's music. Mm -hmm. In guys' gymnastics, artistic gymnastics, we have no music. Right. Okay? Why can't we get... Some tunes? The guy has to dance a why little can, bit. Why can't we have some Why tunes? can't we have some music in our floor routines? Artistic men's gymnastics. Why? Why? Uh, that's a good question. Why can't we get the tunes? Maybe we should do uh, I mean, what do you mean, think? I mean, what do you think? I mean, do you think... We should do a mean gymnastics for I tunes. Mean, I mean, there's an old school thought. There's a new school thought. Old school is like, ah, let's keep it the way it is. And that's right. fine. But it's very old I, school. I, yeah, it's very old school. I feel like now, let, let, let the guys show show their stuff, show their moves on the dance floor. How would you think some Get of these gymnasts would dance? Do you think some guys would break into, like, you know, Ricky Martin moves or maybe uh, maybe some Michael Jackson moves? What, if, you, if we had dance music, okay. what moves would you have done in your floor routine? All right, check it. So here's it. It, it. it would all depend on my mood. Right. Okay. Like if I was straight up going to a meet and I just felt like I wanted to be a ninja, then I put on some like, put on some nice little like, rave, rave, you know, EDM type music. And I wouldn't really dance in music, but what I would really do is I would just like get into that before everyone. And kind of just go flip. Would you do that in the flip corner? pose, boom, and just stay there. You know, put a little martial arts kick in there. You know, a little compound. Would you do that in the corner? I definitely do something like that. But it'd be more, it'd be more, you know, cooler because it'd be with music, obviously. Okay. Okay. You know, and then maybe you know I throw a Torjente in there, or split leg, sh Shishinova. You know what I mean? Torjente, split, <laughs> yeah, split, split leap. Shishinova, you got in with the Shishinova, you know what I mean? Boom, flat. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You bounce up. Do you even know what a Shishinova is? Yeah. All right, cool. It's uh, it's the move when you jump and then you land flat onto your stomach. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's a regular Shishinova. Most people don't even know you don't need to actually straddle to do that. That's actually taking it to the next level. Yeah. If you just jump and land on your stomach. Controlled, that is a Shishinova. There is a finesse to that because you can land a certain way, the wrong way, and it, you know, would not be good. Ruin your day. Yo, for sure. But, so, let's get back to the music. Carrie, what would you do? Uh, I, you know, I think I would want to have a few different routines prepared. Okay, you know, I would okay. go, I would kind of be off the cuff in that feeling of mood, okay. but I definitely have a happy mood routine. Would you show me your b-boy flavor skills or what? I mean, you know, maybe it would be in some, some, of, tracks, each, some of each routine, tracks, you but know? you can do different style, style b-boy moves okay. in each routine. You know, you can have a chill, mellow b-boy session. You can have an like, intense session. You know, just like in Capoeira, you could have a chill play game or you could have a really intense, uh, you know, violent game in Capoeira, you know, when you're so I, that's why I would think I would switch it up. It'd definitely be a switch up of moods, and then with that, my skills would vary in that 
actual setting. So I'd actually take it a step further. So for your saying, your your routine would be more of an improv. Right. But obviously calculated. So if I'm in a chill mood, it'd be a con continuous improv of cool, chill tricks that would complement each other. Nice. You know, if I'm in a obviously a more hyper mood or something, then it'd be a string of hyper tricks that would all complement each other. So that's how I would do it. Yeah, then, you, you know. know so my yeah. own style, my own flair to it. So. Razzle dazzle. What would it take for us to add floor? You know what I think we should do? I think you we should. take an iPod, you plug it in, and you plus, press play. And you just go. That's just what go. it would take. You just go. For those so, guys to do that, they're me. I think, you know, I think what we should do is I think we should challenge some of the, uh, our guests out there, our gymnasts. Would it be like a rogue moment where like somebody just ran out of the stands to plug in their music and press play? Well, I'm not sure, although that's not a... That's not necessary. You know, I'm not sure yeah, that's about not necessary, that. necessary, but... But I think that... A request from a gymnast all, all to say, we, I would like to have my few... Yeah, or even play. that, or even start doing your, your routines to music. Just start doing it. Start thinking about That's what me. songs you like and what you get in the field because you never know. You start keep on creating some of these things. You know, there's a lot of creative gymnasts out there. I'm telling you. I mean, come on, man. Those youngins are flipping, twisting. They're doing it all right now. Why not add some music? Why add to it? Yeah. Maybe the women, the women have you tell the boys can't get down. You know what I'm saying? They can't get down. Well, the kids would be doing like the Millie Rock. Yeah, who knows, man? You know they be putting okay. some dab. You know, you know it's gonna be some dabbing in there. Dab a ranch. Yeah. So, let us know how you feel about the music, men's the and. Tune in to gymnasticsville.com for more updates on gymnastics news. Yes, tune in to Gymnastics Available Voice of Acrobatics. Gymnastics Alright, there, aka Carriotta, we're gonna play a game today. This is gonna be called Gymnastics Cards, okay? And so basically, the name of the game is that any card you pick up, you have to start the story of that song and it has to be something in there acrobatic by the end of the of the of, of the line. So 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 basically what we're gonna do is I will demonstrate. I'm gonna pick a card. Six six back handsprings I had to do back at the time, the summertime of 89. Okay. That's your rhyme. That's my rhyme. Alright, alright, alright. <laughs> ten. The perfect ten. They get it again and again. The college girls, they all win. Dang. Alright, alright. So we got here. We got nine. Nine chin ups. Pullovers. Nine all day chin ups. Nine, nine, nine. Yeah, but nine. Nine chin ups. <laughs> well, I meant like nine, like rider of nine. All right, my friend. Yeah. Oh! Dang, how do you do that? say you do it again. Flip once, flip twice. Every time I land, we get a 10. We just made up this game, all right? Sounds number like three. like a Dr. Seuss right Number three. Come on, we all know the three peak kings. The okay. triple bat. Oh, but are you rhyming or are you just trying to come up with things King. that remind you of the number? <laughs> well, I'm just saying, it's just three. I'm just saying. Just, but you didn't come up with like a rhyme like that. Three, three. That's just a three triple back king. That doesn't rhyme. That doesn't rhyme. Three, we, key, C. Pick a card. <laughs> three, C. That's how you're supposed to rhyme it, G. Because it's the number three. Oh. People do triples all the time. We trying to rhyme. Number 10. Did you even shuffle these cards? <laughs> I'm not sure if I shuffled these cards. <laughs> okay. Alright. Number 8. Eight it's great. It reminds me of when I was a kid in compulsories and that's the score that I got. It's an 8. 
That was great. <laughs> okay. So that's I think the, that's, that's what you was looking for right I there. I think that was it. That was, I mean, it. That, 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 was it. that was this rendition it. of Jim Miss Cobbs right there. We're done. That was it. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, go here, go here, go here. Everybody still doing this? Yeah, you can use that. You can use that as a snippet. Snippet, alright. Um you know, yeah, it could be like a gymnastics real commercial. Exactly. Alright. No, dude, don't stop. Come on, man. What are you doing? You can see it. What are we doing now? <laughs> we accomplished the goal, but we're still trying to like. Do you not actually play any card games? No. You never learned any card games as a kid. You never learned pity pat. You never learned any of those games. I know Tonka Trunks. Spades. Spades, I know a little bit of spades. People might know some of these games. What about uh, poker? Did I play uh, poker? Texas Hold'em? A little bit of Hold'em. Blackjack? Blackjack. That's something that, like, now in yeah. gymnastics, that's something that we used to actually do to pass the time at like gym camps and stuff, right? Yeah. And even sometimes at gym meets. Yeah. Playing well, cards. Playing cards. I know at uh, national team camps, the guys used to like to play cards. In our college days, we used to <laughs> have a little game. Cody and all uh, my Ohio State uh, alumni know this game. We call it Jangles. You know. Jangles, yeah. And so you could only play with quarters. So sometimes we'd be traveling around these airports with like all these quarters. <laughs> but you would like 40, yeah. 50 bucks would be all the quarters. But we called the game Jangles because it was just fun, you know, it was the, the high low game, you know, all right, this is how you play, right? So if we had some uh all right, say so give me two give me two cards, you got two cards, alright? This is how you play jangles, alright? So six, right? Yep. And then I flip it eight, and now you're supposed to say it's called in between. If if you think that card, the next card is going to be in between, you say in between. If not, you say higher or, or no, it has to be in between uh, eight, six or eight. So let's try it again. All right, king. Okay, four. All right, here we go. Now, do you want to bet that the next card will be in between? Yes or no? Uh, yeah, it's going to be. In between. So you got to put a put some jangles in. So yes, yeah, so and that's when you would put oh. the jangles. The jingles. Put some in there. Yep. Got put two. That. Got that. And then somebody can be like, you gotta put them in. Are you just gonna do one? You know, you wanna keep playing it safe? Yeah, you play it safe. One jingle. Alright, that's how it works. Alright, you gotta put it down. You gotta let it go, man. Boom. You gotta let it go. Yes, yes. You gotta let it go. Alright, it's in there. Alright, you ready? Yeah. Here, I'll match you. <coughs> Excuse me, hold up. Alright, you ready? Here we go. Oh, it's a two! It's a two! He loses. I take your money. Because it wasn't in between. Gotcha. It wasn't in between. Boom. Can you see how intense this can get? Let's yeah, do it again. Here we go. All right, five, intense. eight. Now you're going to pass that, right? Nine, six. You're going to pass that. Four, three. What's on? It's super low right now. Oh, ace. Here we go. Mm -hmm. Now the ace. You want that to be high or low, my friend? Uh, low. You want it to be low? Okay. Between the 10 and the ace, you want to go for it? In between? In between, maybe. You want to go for it? Let's go for it. You do? Go you for put it. Put your money down, dog. Boom. Jangle down. All right, man. I want to get in on it. I want to get in on this. Double double down on this. See what you got? Double. Oh, man. That was just a bad call. Now you got no jangles. No more jangles. That's the way the cookie crumbles in the world of jangles. <laughs> Jingles. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another episode of Gymnasticsville. Passing it off. You don't want to pass it? No, you don't want to try? All right, though. No. Okay. All right. How y'all doing? Midnight Robin, a.k.a. Carrie Adderley. Yeah. Big news. Well, this actually kind of came out a month ago, and we were meaning to talk about it on the show. Yeah. And it was definitely something when we first... You know, when I first read about it, it was like, wow, 
that happened. And Kerry, okay, you want to talk about it a little bit? Yeah, that happened was uh, the men's gymnastics uh, and also some of the women's, uh, including Olympic champion Max Whitlock, refusing to sign their performance contracts um, just due to some things of fear of exploitation, um, things that have been happening in USA Gymnastics, same exact things. And, you know, they band together. Uh, the whole men's team and refused to sign the, the team. The two, the team in this last Olympics that brought them up to seven medals in Rio. Wow! They refused to sign. That's so crazy. that was powerful that they band together. Um, you know, and it, it makes me look at our uh, system and our, especially even our men's team. So, you know, our so women's team are speaking up, but the men's team have yet to do anything powerful like that. And um, you know, I think it's there's been past due. I mean, so here's the thing, though, right? You just mentioned that the Great Britain guys, they did very well at that last Olympics in Rio. They brought home a lot of medals, right? Mm -hmm. So they did well, and that happened. When you look at the results from the past two Olympics, I mean, do you think the men have a high standing ground in that department in terms of negotiating and, and, and wanting more? Uh, it's not just the results. men. Okay. Not just the men, the athletes. Athletes in general. Yeah, athletes in general. Okay. Absolutely. They're the ones putting in the work. They're the ones that's putting their body on the line. They're the ones that are getting injured. Okay. So when, you, when you're looking at it from their standpoint, from an athlete standpoint, what are some of the things that you feel can be a little better in, in, in support of the athlete more, especially the guys and girls and the women on the national team? Well, a more, I would say a more transparent and clear, you know, path for everyone. I feel like sometimes, you know, sometimes the whole program's in chaos sometimes, um, and you know, certain regions doing whatever they want to do, and these regions know what they want, and they, and even people in these regions still afraid to speak up uh, together. You know, band together as regions and speak up. You know, if you're all feeling these certain type of ways about a certain, uh, you know, person in position in a, in a certain position, you still feel threatened. It's still that same culture, even with the Me Too. You know, they they were afraid to speak up, and yeah. it's the same thing in the men's program. They're afraid to speak up, a fear of not getting a spot on the national team, their guys not being on the national team. Um, it's the same thing, just in, the, in this standard, obviously. But, hey, there's also, there's there's probably been abuse, too. I'm sure there's probably been some assault on some guys, you know, in our sport. So, and those guys haven't spoke up. So, it'd be great to hear that story. So, I mean, these things still need to be addressed on the men's side. The same way that they're being spoken about and handled on the women's side, there's things that need to go on on the men's side as well to help get the program to stronger again, you know? Yeah, I mean, and you brought in a good point. I mean, it, it, it's, you know, in our sport, it's, it's very, it's very tight-lipped, and obviously, you know, the culture of it and the judging and how subjective it can be at times, and... And, you know, these athletes put their bodies and their minds through so much, so much. And you put in the political aspect of it. This is some of the reasons why it, it, it's tough, so tough to speak up in the sport. And why it's been really kind of been the same way for what, the last 20, 30 years. Yeah. And it's always the, it's always on the inside, you know, it's. It's people on the inside that are afraid to speak up, and it's great because somebody on the inside spoke up about the British in this article, and an insider, uh, this article from The Guardian, okay. and um, this insider describes, one insider described the situation as complete chaos, evidence of weak leadership in, in British gymnastics need for complete control over the athletes. They are the most important people in the sport. Once again, they feel they're being exploited. To be a world-class gymnast, all you need is the athlete, coach, the gym, and they want to know where all the money is going. You know? Yeah. It's understood there will be showdown talks between British gymnastics and the athletes 
Um, this is on this in this thing they're talking about a certain time, but they're obviously trying to find a resolution to this. So yeah, you know, it, it, it's that's that's clear, you know. And on the inside, that it, that's the same things happening. Well, that's been happening on the on the on the USA gymnastics. The athletes have been exploited for years. They don't make enough money. Um, it's clear, yeah. you know, they don't make enough money, and the money that they do make, if you're not living at the training center, it's really tough to. Do it, you know. That's yeah, what they talk about Sam McCulloch. I mean, people said him. You know, they said the only reason Alice Nador trains one event is because that's all he can afford to do. Yeah. You know, he can't even afford to train more events that he'd like to do. Yeah. You know, or to be of that high level because of he's an Olympic medalist and he still can't afford to train six events and do this as a profession. But yeah, that's but sad. Listen, but I'm gonna say this still. All right, and those are some valid points. But where is the money coming from? Okay. Coming from or where's going? It, where, where, well, uh, right? You that that's a. I, know, I can tell you where it's coming from. Guys, both of those questions, right? Okay, where it's coming from or from the sponsors? But where it's going is into USA Gymnastics organizations, uh, leaders' pockets. They're still paying. Steve Penny got paid a million dollars, and he's still getting paid from new sources that we have. He is actually still getting paid. Well, yeah. Quarterly from USA Gymnastics. Well, we, we have for that whole you know million dollar sevens whatever that he package that he got received. Yeah, exactly. So that's going to have to be paid off over the next few years. And yeah, that's. And how are they be... still paying this guy when there's all these court cases pending that are going to that are going to be paid lawsuits? So, I mean, it's it's very interesting. Yes, where is the money going? We know where the money's coming from because the athletes are bringing it in. And sponsors are bringing it. That's where the money's coming from. They're a nonprofit. Yeah. I know where the money's coming from. It's not coming from them. It's coming from other organizations like NBC and all those other sponsors that are giving them the money. Okay. Or the publicity or whatever. And obviously that turns into gen uh, revenue dollars for the athletes. You know, obviously for the women, Gabby and Simone and Natalie, they all have their things going on in business, which is amazing. It's great for them as athletes, especially for women in the sport um, and as that needs to continue but it needs to be cleaned up on the organizational side because you know these women and men could do a lot better and make this overall kind of make the sport you know grow more if it's nurtured in the right way and not in this kind of kind of toxic environment that we've been exposed to this whole time yeah so Pay the athletes more, and we will receive more, right? Is that the case? Mm, yeah, it's you pay the athletes more, but in this case, you gotta remember all these sponsorship dollars, just millions and tens of millions, and our men's team is still only getting maybe what some of these guys, maybe twenty thousand dollars a year. Yeah, thirty thousand dollars a year, maybe. Yeah, from, it's tough. From it's tough them. right now. And you know, on the US, you know, the USOC medal thing, that whole debate, we had a podcast about that. People talking about the medals and the money. So, you know, and that's how they are able to earn more money if they get a medal. So, but that's still that, that's still part of that old culture. Yeah. That's still part of that old way of thinking that's that's caused this whole thing in the first place. So if they don't stop that, they gotta get away from that in order to really start fresh. You know? Yeah. You know? Uh, what do you think? No, you're I mean, what do you, how I mean, do you feel about these the British guys? I mean, when you saw the British guys, when you read that article, you know, you saw that, wow, Olympic champion just said, no, I'm not signing this, uh, British gymnastics. And then you look at our guys and our situations and, you know, the people we know, and they're silent. You know, they're doing other things. Yeah, I mean, I mean, what I what I felt was I was. First thing was it was, I was kind of happy for them as a team that they were able to, stay together, and do this as a team, you know, of, of athletes looking at the situation was hey if we don't if we don't do something now in the positions that we're in then, um, how are we going to be really true to our sport? Right, you know, so I think they definitely, yeah, I commend them for taking such a big stand because all, 
all the things that you said is the reasons why it's so tough to make a stand like that. And they did it as a team. And we commend them. And hopefully, you know, they get what they, you know, they're worth in that situation. Um, and as for the American men and women, they need to do the same if they feel that way. They need to stick together and decide, hey, is this the direction that we want to go as a team of athletes looking at, you know, themselves personally, but looking, you know, a few years down the road into the next generation, you know. The, you right. Know, they are ambassadors of the sport, it's a, right? And it's an opportunity for them to uh, help continue to grow the sport. Yeah. It's an opportunity for them to see when they're done and then they have kids and their kids' kids that they can still enjoy the same opportunities. That's what I'd like to think that, you know, uh, a lot of the well-known gymnasts, are looking towards and not just me I'm, I'm getting mine right now and that's all that matters because I've seen a lot of that happen especially even on the men's side they yeah. get theirs right now and then they're out and then they don't come back you know into the community and give back um, and so you know gotta yes. stay engaged right I mean right. you know after you know, we're if done you like the sport if you love the sport engaged. the sport that gives Listen, you so much right you and I you know you and I we talk about it all the time right. gymnastics is a future sport what we mean by that is that this sport has the capabilities of being tremendous if certain things and new policies are put in place to help it grow. Make it more fun. Definitely make it more fun. More team aspect. More sizzle. Gotta sizzle. have the sizzle. We got to Rise have the devil. sizzle. Gotta have it. Because that would make it more enjoyable for everyone to watch. Yeah. Format changes, I mean, whatever. It's just the fact that there's a lot of knowledgeable former gymnasts that work with all types of amazing organizations that they don't even tap into. You know? That they know these people work in places that do these things on the highest level on production and marketing and, and distributing a product at a high level. And they don't even care to even engage in conversation or any of that. So it's, you know, it's, it's hard and that's that culture when they're going to do it all themselves versus really, you know, letting the community help in the growth of the sport. Yeah. That's what we're trying to do. We try to grill. We try to grill people. And not just acrobatics, but just or not just gymnastics, but acrobatics as a whole. Yes. You know, as a whole, you see it in b boying, you you see it in martial arts and martial arts tricking. And the um, stunt industry, you see it everywhere. You know, the stunt industry. You know, entertainment. You see it in jujitsu. You know, even in martial arts, you, in a lot of martial arts, you see a lot of acrobatics. You know, from the ground to actually, obviously, you know, capoeira, taekwondo. It's very acrobatic. You know, and having that awareness of, of the body and the mind. Yep. You know, to be able to do these things, these amazing feats. All right, Jamassus Bill. We're going to enter on that note. Rick, ticket, 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 tang, bang. Singing, you have the practice for the challenge you're bringing on yourself. Cause believe me, it's hard when your mind gives up. You